The shirt detail page has access to the main products array from an include file, and it has the product ID of a particular shirt from a get variable. Let's take a look at how to work with the information in these two variables. Open shirt.php in your text editor. We can access the ID from the web address using PHP special underscore get variable, just like we did when displaying the contact form. Let's load that ID into a regular PHP variable. Next, let's load a copy of the shirt we need into a working variable called product. We can reference a particular element in the array by using square brackets with the key after the name of the array. Instead of specifying a specific number, we can use the product ID variable for the key. Let's display the information from the product ID variable and the working product array to the screen just to make sure you understand what's happening. When I refresh this page, the ID in the web address is 102. This gets loaded into the product ID variable, and the corresponding shirt gets loaded into the working product array. If I go back and instead click on the blue shirt, the ID in the web address is 103, the product ID variable and the working product array change accordingly. This one file can now be used to display the shirt details for all eight shirts. We don't need eight separate pages. We can set the shirt ID in the web address, and the same code can then be used for every shirt. Let's now add all the HTML and PHP code we'll need to display the details for the specified shirt. Let's first remove all this testing code that displays the variables on the screen. Just like all the other pages, we'll need to set the page title and section variables. We'll set the section variable so that the shirt's link in the navigation is underlined. The page title should equal the name of the shirt, which we have in the name element of our working product array. We can now include the header. We'll need to put the HTML in place for the structure of the page, just like we've done on the other pages. At the end of the file, we'll include the footer. And now to the content of the page. This page has a breadcrumb at the top that helps orient visitors and gives them a link back to the shirt's listing page. After the link, we'll include the title of the shirt. This should again come from the product array. Let me show you how this will look in the browser. You can see the name of the shirt displayed here. After the breadcrumb, there's a div for the picture which will get displayed on the left of the page.
To achieve the design with CSS, I needed a wrapper span here around the image tag. The source of the image and the alternate text both come from the array, just like they did on the shirt's listing page. Let's take a look in the browser again. The page is really coming together. I'll go back to the shirt's listing page and click on a different shirt now. Notice how the content of the page changes from the blue shirt to the green shirt. Next, we need a div for the details that will display on the right. The H1 on the page consists of the price and the name of the shirt, both values from the array. The price has a different text size and color, so I'm adding a span around it that my CSS targets. Because we are using an array, we can use the same code to generate the shirt detail pages for all the shirts. If we decide later that we don't want the price to be part of the H1, for example, we can easily modify this one template file. The shirt detail pages for every single shirt will be updated all at once. Next, we'll need the HTML for the form that we got from PayPal. I still have that open in my text editor. Let's bring that code over to shirt.php. Most of the form will remain the same from shirt to shirt but we need to get a few of the values from the array. The PayPal ID is different from shirt to shirt. Item name is also different. Let's see, I think that's it. If you're thinking that the available sizes will vary from shirt to shirt, you're right. Patience, though. We'll get to that shortly. Let's go back to the shirt's listing page in the browser. I can now click on a particular shirt and see the full shirt details page. From here, I can select the size and add the shirt to my cart. The other items I added earlier are still here also. I'll go ahead and remove those. Let me add a zip code here so we can see the shipping charges. We have one shirt, and the shipping charge for one shirt is $5. Let's continue shopping. I'll come back to the shirt's listing page and click on the blue shirt. I'll add that one to my cart also. Notice how the shipping charge is now zero, which matches the shipping rates we set up in PayPal. Orders with two or more shirts get free shipping. We now have our shirt detail template file using the form code from PayPal. Visitors to our site can now add our shirts to their shopping cart. That was no small feat. Well done.
We still have a couple of things to do to finish this page, but let's take a break first for a cold, refreshing glass of water. And a code challenge.